Light. Hold up. That's the old one. Where's the new one? Ah, there it is. Hey guys, I'm Grunt, and welcome to the 16th episode of Learning the Maps. Today we're going back to Theme Park, which got a rework in Shifting Tides. As always, timestamps are in the description. Let's get started. We'll start outside with spawns and exterior cameras. The first spawn is the main entrance spawn in the southwest. Compared to the old Theme Park, not a whole lot has changed for the main entrance spawn. We've still got the same multiple paths in front of us, all taking us to the map. And if we were to travel east, we'd still have a straight pathway to get to the bumper car spawn. With all the trees and all the geometry giving minimal cover as you approach the building. Moving up to the building, we can see four windows. They'd take us into break room, barrel, break room again, and the lower arcade respectively. One thing you'll notice is the main entrance is now completely blocked off, and the first exterior camera is also in the same spot. Behind the camera there's a couple of pathways back to spawn, but if we follow the building north, we'll find the stairs up to the cafe balcony. Behind this small structure, there's a pathway to the teacup spawn in the northwest. But it should also be noted that you can get up on top of the structure, though it's not nearly as useful as it was, but it's an option. And now we'll head over to the second spawn, which is the teacup spawn in the northwest. Right off the bat, we can see the path back down to the main entrance spawn. And off to the east, we'll find a few paths taking us to the north side of the map. Continuing back towards the main entrance spawn, we'll find the storage window. And the stairs, which will take us up to the cafe balcony which is still used to get into the upper arcade and cafe. Heading west through the structures, we'll find the path back to the main entrance spawn, and back to the teacup spawn. And if we follow the teacups around to the east, we'll find the second outside camera. Continuing to go east, we'll find the toilet's window. And then we'll head over to the final spawn, which is the bumper car spawn in the east. Which, as you'd expect, is in front of some bumper cars. Off to the south, we'll find a small shed that'll take us to the southeast side of the map. which is considerably less cluttered than it used to be. Over to the west is the main entrance spawn. But just before that, there's a ramp taking us up to the roof of the castle, where we can see the southwest side of the building. And we'll also find the control room window, with the maintenance window directly under that. Heading around to the east side of the map, We'll get our first good look at the new cash balcony. And we can also head back through the bumper cars to get back to spawn. Going north instead of south at the start will take us around to the northeast side. Which still has a camera and is the final outside camera for theme park.
from here we can get to the gong entrance, which is under the new cash balcony. And we'll also find the teller's window right next to it. Around the north side we'll find the locker's door and the bathroom window above that. And heading further west takes us back to the teacup spawn. And with that we've finished the outside of the map and we'll head back to the gong door which will take us into the first floor. But, as always in the top left, you'll see the in-game name for a room, another name for that room in round brackets, basic callouts for that room in square brackets, and more specific callouts in curly brackets. Like I said, we'll be starting outside the gong door on the east side of the map. The first thing we'll notice about Gong is, well, the Gong. Off to the north we'll find Tellers, which has a window in the back. Heading back into Gong we'll find a door into the red hallway. But we'll get back here in a bit. Gong also takes us into Maintenance, which has a wall into Dragon and is a very useful room for attackers attacking throne room from the east. We've got a window looking out near castle, and a wall into throne room, and a door into dragon with the first interior camera right above it. Dragon has the dragon or red stairs taking us up to the dragon hallway on the second floor. which we'll come back to later. Dragon will also take us into Throne Room. And it's got a wall into Maintenance. Heading into the Red Hallway, we'll find the door back to Gong, and a wall into Tellers. Following the hallway will take us into Lockers which takes us outside to the north side of the map. Heading back into the hallway, we'll find a wall into Armory and the Yellow Stairs, which would take us up to the Daycare Hallway. There's also the Yellow Balcony above the stairs, and if we continue to follow the Yellow Hallway, we'll find the second inside camera. From here we could continue following the hallway, or we can go into toilets, which has a window out to the north side, and is also a crucial room to hold when defending lab and storage. Storage hasn't changed that much, we've still got the window on the west side, and it'll still take us into drug lab, which is now just called lab. Lab's got a wall into storage by the window. And it houses all three objectives, including the bomb site that it shares with storage. It can take us out to the lower arcade, but if we head over to the back corner we'll find another wall into storage. Which, if you do plan on opening, will make cowering in the back corner of Lab a lot more dangerous now that the window has been moved. With that, we'll head out through the hallway into the lower arcade, which has the arcade stairs taking us up to the upper arcade, which we'll come back to soon. And now that the main door is completely blocked off, the lower arcade is a lot more defensible, with the only external entrance being the window. The lower arcade will also take us into barrel, which is definitely more appealing to attackers now. It's got a window to the south side of the map, and walls into throne room and into the hallway. Heading back to the lower arcade, and looking straight up we'll find the third inside camera.
Heading back through the hallway, we'll find the walls and a barrel. As well as a bunch of walls into the lab. This will also take us back over to the toilet's door and over to the yellow hallway. Heading back, we can find the door to blue, which will take us into throne room and armory. Armory houses a fuse target and a bomb site that it shares with throne room. It's got a wall leading into the hallway by yellow stairs. And it'll also take us over into throne room. Which has two breakable walls back into armory. And it also houses a secure site and the bomb site that it shares with armory. It's also got a door into blue and a wall into barrel. You can hide behind the Lord's Throne for a bit of extra cover, and there's a wall into maintenance on the east side. And now just because Tachunk is not sitting on his throne, doesn't mean you shouldn't bow in its presence. And with that, we'll head back into Dragon, and head up to the second floor. At the top of Dragon Stairs, we'll find the Dragon Balcony, overlooking Dragon, which has a breakable floor above maintenance by the Dragon Wall. The Dragon Hallway will also take us into Control Room, which has a window overlooking the castle on the southeast side of the map. You'll also find a hatch on the roof, and the majority of the floor is breakable, and it's above maintenance. Initiation has a wall back into control room. It also houses a sacrifice and the bomb site that it shares with office. And the floor? Not breakable. Waiting room is smack bang in the middle of the second floor, and it's got a wall back into initiation. And the floor is breakable, and it's above. And the floor is breakable and it's above armory. There's also a door into the cache hallway, and one into office, which houses a secure site and the bomb site that it shares with initiation. Some of the floor is breakable above the back of armory, and there's a wall back into waiting. In the back we'll find the vault, which has a wall out onto the yellow balcony. An office will also take us into the bathroom, which has a window directly above the locker's door. Cash doesn't have an objective, but is still a good room to have control of for either side when the objective is around office initiation. The floor is breakable and it's above tellers and gong. There's also the first hatch and it goes into tellers by the window. Out onto the cash balcony. This will almost always see something if the objective is around office initiation. The floor is breakable. Don't know how useful that'll be, but hey, options. It's also got a window back into the dragon hallway. Back into cash, we'll find a bunch of walls. One into dragon hallway. One into the cash hallway. And one into office. Cash hallway also takes us back to the dragon hallway, where we'll find the final camera for theme park. And the dragon hallway will also take us back to the dragon balcony and the dragon stairs. Going back to waiting, we can head through to the daycare hallway, where we'll find the second hatch. This one takes us down into blue. The hallway also takes us into bunk, which houses a hostage and a bomb site that it shares with daycare. 
There's a breakable wall into initiation. And a decent chunk of the floor is breakable and it's above barrel. Break room has two windows out to the south side of the building. And it's also going to be an important room to have control of when defending bunk and daycare. It's also got a wall into bunk. And the floor is not breakable. Bunk also has a hatch going down into barrel. Heading out to the arcade balcony, we'll find a wall into break room. And the arcade balcony overlooks the lower arcade. And will also take us to the upper arcade, which has a door into daycare, but also has the arcade stairs taking us back down to the lower arcade. Heading into daycare, it's got a breakable floor above lab and the first floor hallway. It's also got a wall into bunk and daycare houses all three objectives including the bomb site it shares with bunk. It'll also take us back to the daycare hallway where we'll find another hatch on the roof. Back to the upper arcade most of the floor is breakable and it's above lab. It's also got a window out to the cafe balcony. And an entrance into the cafe hallway, which has a wall into daycare. And obviously takes us into cafe, which has an entirely breakable floor above storage. A bit of the first floor hallway near the toilet's door. Lab. And toilets. It'll also take us out to the cafe balcony. Where we'll find the stairs we saw in the spawn section. And the upper arcade window. Heading through the wall behind the counter takes us onto the yellow balcony. Which takes us into vault. And going back through cafe. Into the cafe hallway. Takes us back to the daycare hallway. Where we'll find a wall into office. and the yellow stairs taking us back down to the first floor. Now let's head up to the roof. We'll start outside in the southeast corner. So, immediately we'll be greeted by a hatch into control room. And heading further north, there's a way down onto the cash balcony. And heading through the middle, you might recognise that the shape is very similar to the old trains. On the west side, we'll find a hatch into daycare hallway. And other than that, there's really not much else going for the roof. There's a pathway back to the east side on the south side of the roof. And other than that, all we've really got is a way onto the cafe balcony. And back towards the east, there's also a way we can look into the bathroom window. But other than that, not much. And now let's move on to objectives, starting with bomb sites. The first pair is an initiation and office. Second pairs in bunk and daycare.
third lot's in the armory and throne room. And the final pair is in lab and storage. Secure sites now. First one's in office. Second one's in daycare. The third one is in throne room. And the last one's in lab. And last, but always least, hostages. First hostage is in initiation. Second fuse target's in bunk. Third bullet bag's in the armory. And the final sacrifice is crying about the loss of drugs down in the lab. And that's it for the reworked theme park. As always, after this, you'll see the usual peaks, runouts, and useful rotations compilation. Attacker's perspective first, followed by the defenders. The next map will be the one for year five, season one. Here's hoping it's an Oregon rework similar to the stadium map because that is pretty darn nifty. Anyway, if this did help, subscribe, like, yada yada, and I'll see you in the next one.